really admire what you're doing because you're doing what you all enjoy and you're doing it well. But you are just a little star. My problem watching it was I think you're great, but I don't think you need the group. Before Kalani appeared on America's Got Talent with her band Pop Life, then broke off from the group to remake herself as a solo artist. Only make me stronger. Before reaching a tsunami of fans, selling her own clothing line through her website and getting co-signs from G-Eazy, Party Next Door and Chance the Rapper, bringing her net worth to an estimated 8.5 million. They can't stop me from creating, you know, that's literally taking everything away from me. That's what I am at this point. That's what I become is 100% music. You can't take that. Before she dated Kyrie Irving, then broke it off to rekindle her romance with Party Next Door and the negative media attention caused her to attempt suicide. How sad. Nothing anybody ever does is because of you, so you can't take anything personally. I, mm. I don't know what just you just went through to make you so angry towards me right now because I've done nothing. After her debut album peaked at number one on Billboard's R&B charts. in Oakland, the child of a drug addicted mother who was constantly in and out of jail, and a father who passed away when she was still a toddler. Her dreams of becoming a professional dancer were cut short by an injury, and her singing career seemed to be over shortly after it began when she had a falling out with the teen pop group Pop Life. Alone and desperate, she had to steal just to feed herself, then a guardian angel swooped in to save her, and that angel was Nick Cannon, the host of America's Got Talent, for real. She's back in East Oakland, homeless, and I was wow. like, what? It's like, yeah, they kicked her out of the group. I was like, they, she rolled for them. Like, right. you know, she was, and I had, I was like, man, we gotta go get her. What a nice guy. I guess we'll forgive him for the turban. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Kalani prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. In the past, we've covered other artists like Zendaya and Krucha Tran. Perhaps you wanna check those out, but as always, let me know who's next in the comments down below. Ashley Parrish was born on April 24th, 1995 and grew up in Oakland, California. She is of mixed ethnicity being part white, part black, part Native American, part Spanish and part Filipino. What a mix. My name is Hawaiian and I'm not Hawaiian so a lot of Hawaiians get mad at me all the time when they're like, you're so fake, you're a fake Hawaiian, your name is Hawaiian, blah 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 blah. Kalani was born premature and her mother was on the run from the police at the time. Both parents were addicted to drugs, her father died when she was just one or two years old. Her mother was in and out of prison leaving her to be raised in foster care until her aunt adopted her. All that time young Kalani helped to look after her aunt's kids and lived in a beaten up duplex where everything was broken, the heater, the sink and the washing machine. But Kalani was happy to have a safe home and things were relatively good. That is until her mother re-entered her life. At that point her mother had two younger kids and continued to use drugs on and off. Kalani was able to visit but would be distraught when she was dragged out of her mom's home. At the same time she began struggling with body image issues, she had a muscular build and a lump on her stomach from an umbilical hernia. She didn't feel feminine and would stay as covered up as possible at all times. Glani attended the Oakland School of the Arts where she flourished as a performer. Her initial focus was on dance and her talent was widely acknowledged by teachers and fellow students. But after an injury she had to change her focus and picked up singing instead. Kalani is openly bisexual and as a teenager had both girlfriends and boyfriends. She got her first girlfriend in ninth grade and broke it off as she struggled with her sexual identity. Around this time she was recruited as a vocalist for a local teen cover band called Pop Life, featuring other performers from her school. So he's like, my dad's over there, like can you sing to him? I'm like, what? And I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm nervous. I don't sing to people, like don't judge me right now. The group was managed by music producer Dwayne Wiggins and its members included his sons and nephew, Dylan Wiggins, Jaden Wiggins, and Ali Ken Loken. The group gigged excessively until landing a breakthrough spot in 2011 on season six of America's Got Talent. Every time I close my eyes, I see my name. Finished in fourth place, not exactly the result they were hoping for, but being on a main stage the whole world was watching, well it was great exposure. From there they started touring with Zendaya on her Swag It Out tour, but Kalani left the group shortly after the show over management and contract disputes. At the same time she watched herself on TV and felt old body image issues resurface. She was chubbier then and apparently everyone told her she looked a lot like a duck. Not my words. 
I guess the people in the comments. It's TV, I don't know where. Oh, online. She lost her virginity at the age of 17 when she started drinking and partying. She started getting tattoos and in her senior year left Oakland to move to LA. At this time, she was still a minor and after enrolling in Hollywood High, was pulled from the building in handcuffs and placed in a group home. She then returned to Oakland penniless and started thieving just to get by. She stole iPhones from people's hands, shoplifted and robbed houses and parked cars. She was literally hungry and heading down a dark path. Then Nick Cannon, the host of America's Got Talent, called her up out of the blue and invited her to come to LA and join a rap group he was forming. It seemed like a golden opportunity, but Kalani soon found out that she would be expected to spit lyrics she didn't write. She didn't love the idea and returned to the Bay Area defeated. But just a few months later, Nick Cannon called Kalani again, this time to help start up her solo singing career. How sweet. And so that man saved my life, you know, undoubtedly. Like, I owe everything to him at some point. He moved her into an apartment in the valley and flew her out to New York for studio sessions with Jahan Sweet. Jahan is a classically trained pianist and producer from Florida. He soon became a key collaborator for Kalani, so much so that she calls him her musical soulmate. Kalani returned to LA to polish off her Cloud 19 mixtape, which dropped on August 26, 2014. Complex put it at number 28 of their best albums of the year list. She went on to get co signed from G Easy, Chance the Rapper, and Party Next Door, who she started dating for a little while. She did her first national tour and surpassed 10 million plays on her SoundCloud account. In 2015, she dropped a second mixtape, You Should Be Here, released on April 28, 2000. This was enough to get her signed with Atlantic, and she began working on her debut studio album. Major artists began collaborating with her, including Justin Bieber, Pusha T, Post Malone, and later Stormzy. We like, like we did a bio on him recently, it did well. He's great. In January of 2016, it was confirmed that she was in a relationship with NBA star Kyrie Irving, but the two broke up not long after the relationship became public. In March, Party Next Door posted a picture of her hand on Instagram, implying that he had gotten back together with her. There was a huge backlash on Twitter and fans were furious that she was cheating on Kyrie. She actually wasn't, as Kyrie pointed out in a tweet that they had already been broken up before the Party Next Door post. Still, the abuse continued, and it affected Kalani a lot. In late March, she attempted to commit suicide. Yikes. She was rushed to the hospital and soon posted on Instagram a photo of her arm hooked up to an IV with a caption that read, Today I wanted to leave this earth. Being completely selfish for once, never thought I'd get to such a low point, but don't believe the blogs you read. No one was cheated on and I'm not a bad person. Everyone is hurt and everyone is in a place of misunderstanding. But as of today, I had no single wish to see tomorrow, but God saved me for a reason and for that, I must be grateful. Cause I'm not in heaven right now for a reason. On that note, bye Instagram. After posting that, she deactivated both her Instagram and Twitter accounts. I was just over Twitter in general because I just didn't know how to handle so many opinions that I didn't ask for. A few months later, her studio album was released on January 27, 2017. Sweet Sexy Savage debuted at number one on the R&B album charts and peaked at number three on the Billboard 200. And the rest of the story, well, that's pretty much it. Or you know it because this is before they're famous. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Be sure to watch our other videos. Also hit subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Boom! Ow! That hurt.